you finished lesson one. Congratulations. Now this was lesson two, and we're going to be discussing being married to God's kingdom. Lesson one was discussing being married to God's righteousness. Lesson two, we're going to talk about being married to God's kingdom. And it doesn't mean what you think it does, unless you've watched this before. So being married to God's kingdom. Mark 16, 17, Luke 10, 9, Matthew 28, and Matthew 10, 1. We're going to talk about being married to being a disciple and being married to making more disciples. Why? Because this is the kingdom of God invading planet Earth with heaven. So Mark 16, 17 talks about casting out demons, okay, Luke 10, 9, um, it's a sign of a believer in Mark 16, 17. Luke 10, 9 talks about healing the sick. And Matthew 10 says that when you heal the sick, that you are to tell someone that the kingdom of heaven has come upon you. Because it is also written that the kingdom of heaven is inside of you. So when the Holy Spirit, when King Jesus is operating through you, to heal someone, you say, in Jesus' name, and they're healed, that's the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven has come upon them. Okay, is it clicking? Are you understanding this? God's kingdom, being married to God's kingdom first. This is what we do. Matthew 28, 19, and 20 says that, um, you know, we are, it's the, great, the famous Great Commission verse. That we're supposed to go around teaching, you know, making disciples of all nation, nations and teaching everyone what he taught us. And obviously, Jesus and his disciples went around everywhere, not just preaching the gospel, okay, but they were healing people, they were casting out demons, okay, they were baptizing, okay. So that is doing all that he taught us to do and making, um, being married to making more disciples. So it is one thing to be the one healing and casting out demons and baptizing in Jesus' name. And it's another thing to be making more people who are healing, casting out demons and baptizing in Jesus' name. And sometimes that's where the block comes because um well I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second so write these down get out your lesson two questions and start answering some of those questions while you watch the rest of the video now that we've talked about being married to being a disciple which is part of seeking and desiring the kingdom of god first and we've talked about being married to making more disciples which is part of desiring God's kingdom more than anything, even your own spouse, so that you can add that to your life. We're going to talk about being married to other disciples. Now, when we talk about this kind of spiritual marriage, um, you know, it's along the lines of when a Christian guy would say that Jesus is my husband, or if he wrestles with the thought of Jesus being of being the bride of Christ because it's spiritual okay it's a spiritual marriage which really just means uh, you're dedicated it's a commitment that cannot be bro broken like a vow and definitely a covenant okay that cannot be destroyed being married to other disciples as you can see there are a lot of Bible verses here that I want you to take a screenshot of real quick um, and write them down. Definitely go over them, meditate on them, and pray over them yourself. And these are just a handful, honestly, because it's so imperative, it's so important that you are married to other real disciples, not just people who go to church on Sunday, you know, not just... People who, uh, people who are willing to die for you, okay? People who do the work of a disciple. 
those kinds. We need to be firmly united with them, okay? Because that's the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is perfect unity. This morning, uh, during my time with the Holy Spirit and my coffee outside, I was singing to Jesus that he would never leave me or forsake me, and there's nothing I could do to run him off. And while I was singing that to him, there's, you would never leave me or forsake me, there's nothing I can do to run you off. I had an epiphany that that's how we're supposed to, to love one another. We're supposed to reflect the love of heaven towards one another because that's exactly the kind of love that the world um, is looking for. Not the kind of love that um, pleases your flesh, you know, or uh, addictions to, um, you know, drugs or alcohol, um, things that numb the pain of being alone, rejected, neglected, abandoned, and in some cases, you know, abused. You know, there's kids out there who grow who grown up abused in their house. Women who have been abused by their husbands and they're looking to us to represent heaven on earth. And so this is definitely one way that we do that. It's so important. John 17, 22 where this is Jesus' famous last words before he died, his famous last prayer. And he says that the world will believe when where one is, he is one. He says that he's given us his glory to be together already. He's given us his glory to be in unison. John seventeen twenty two, So that the world will believe. So if you really care about seeing people to come to Jesus, if you really care about them being encountered by God Almighty, if you really care about getting them baptized in the kingdom of heaven, if you really care about seeing them happy and healed and set free, then the fruit of that would be married to other disciples, committed to other disciples, dedicated to being firmly united with other disciples. Not just touching and introdu introducing yourself and then you never follow up, but being a family because the disciples were breaking bread daily in each other's homes. Every day they were seeing each other. Every day they were looking at each other. Every day they were firmly united and nothing could tear them apart. Nothing. Because that's the love of heaven. So we need to be one as Jesus is one so that the world will believe. So if you really care about the world believing, this is what you'll do. He didn't say that the world will believe through your healing ministry. He didn't say that the world will believe through your cute little church service. No, he said that the world will believe when we're one. Okay, you see why this is so important, important, muy importante. Acts 244. Again, they were firmly united, striving for the faith together, sharing everything. People knew that this was real because they were seeing the signs, the wonders, the miracles. People were being healed. The deaf was um, being healed. They're hearing. The blind was given sight. You know, the lame were able to walk. And, and people were selling everything to become a part of this, to become a, the, part of the family of God. Here's my house. Here's my car. Here's my clothes. Here's my flat screen TV. Here's my game consoles. Here's my everything, my land. Here's all the money from selling all of that, and I'm giving it to you to become a part of something that is more important than me, more important than anything, more important than my chase for money, my job, more important than anything is the kingdom of heaven and I'm willing to die for it. I'm giving Jesus my life. I'm willing to give all of my possessions over to invade earth with heaven for the kingdom of God because I seek it first. I desire it first more than anything. That's what they were doing. Acts 2 44 and everyone had everything that they needed. Nobody lacked anything. They were a family. And thousands were being added to them daily. First Corinthians 14, 26, Ephesians 4, 16. All these are so good. But I want to talk about um, Leviticus 26, 8. 
Leviticus 26, 8 says that one of you can put a hundred to flight, but a hundred of us can put 10,000 to flight. So what is it that you really want to do? Because I can tell you from experience that if you try to do this all by yourself, okay, let me, let me say it like this. In 2016, King Jesus, the all-powerful Holy Holy Spirit, said that we, he told me that we needed to be like zebras. And that's all he said. Just we need to be like zebras. And I didn't know anything about zebras, so I Googled it. Zebras. And Google came back and told me that their herd is actually called a dazzle. And you know how they're opposite of their environment? Everything in the African Sahara is like either brown or, you know, green or tan and um, sometimes yellow depending on the season. But the zebras are black and white striped. And when they're together, the devil can't tell where one ends and the other begins. So it looks just like this one big, huge mass, this one big body. And, and when the lion comes towards them, they pound the ground with their hooves and create this mini earthquake that terrifies the devil and makes it flee. And they do that all together in unison. But if there's a zebra all by him or herself, guess what? It's like a billboard. Everybody and their mama can see it and it's the perfect target. So if you want to be like, oh, well, the Bible says that one can take a hundred, so watch me go. Well, honey, it ain't going to be that easy. I'm speaking from experience. You will be attacked and you will be attacked and attacked and attacked and attacked and attacked until you break. Okay? And you will break. Trust me. So Leviticus 26, 8, 100 of us can take 10,000. What are you really trying to do with the life that God gave you? Judges 6, 16. The angel tells Gideon that he's going to be able to defeat the enemy as one man. So let's think about it. We are one army, one body of Christ, and we move in unison and harmony, and we defeat the devil as one person. No one's divided in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is perfectly united. So if there's any divisions amongst us, it's not the kingdom of heaven that we're bringing to the world. Ephesians 4.1 says, make every effort, make every effort, make every effort, okay? What effort can you put into it? If the devil comes and tries to attack you to create a division, an offense, somebody hurt your feelings, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to make every effort like the word of God tells you to? Or are you just going to stay offended, say you can't talk to that person, and you allow the devil to slice and dice through that and divide it all? And it's now it's not even the kingdom of heaven anymore. Where is the unity? Are you going to allow the devil to come in and cause that person to be sick so they can't attend? Ephesians 4.1 Make every effort. To keep the unity through the bond of peace, okay? Because of God's love. Make every effort. It's so important. If we're struggling with this so much, then we really don't know God's love at all, okay? Because he never leaves you. He never forsakes you. And he died for you. You think that's all for you? Oh, well, it's all for me. Me, 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 me. No. No. 
That's why his famous last prayer was for us to be one. Please don't think this is all about you and your desires and your needs. This is about the earth. This is about every single person, every human being. So if you're being attacked, there's a bigger picture. This isn't about your emotions or your joy or your peace or your freedom. Okay? This is about the bigger picture. This is so important for the kingdom of heaven, for God's kingdom here on earth. So we desire it more than anything. Desire unity. Be married to other disciples. And so that's why um, most of you are still single. Um, it, it's a little like the story in um, the book of Genesis when Abraham makes his servant put his hand under his thigh to promise him that he won't find a wife for his son amongst the heathen, amongst the Canaanite people, but that he would go to his own people to find a wife for him, uh, to find Jacob's wife. Um, and so we need to have that same kind of mindset. Would you rather, wouldn't you rather have a husband whose mind was a fortress, okay, who could cast devils out like nobody's business, had super massive spiritual muscles, okay, because he was, you know, baptizing, walking in the faith, and staying friends, you know, being a family, close friends, and loving them as their spiritual family with other disciples. Don't you think you would rather have a wife who was already healing the sick and, and anointing them in Jesus' name and just had a heart for heaven to invade earth with the love of God. You know, since we're not being committed to each other like that and we're kind of just doing our own thing, our own ministries, you're still single. Because there isn't really like a place for you to go amongst your own people to find a wife or a husband. Because everyone's doing their own thing. It's like what Jesus told me this morning. Um, it was another epiphany because today is my birthday. Thank you. And so he really had some special time with me this morning. And I was praying over, you know, my classes and my oils and my ministry and everything like that. And then I was like, whoa, wait a minute, my ministry? No, 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 no. You just gave me an assignment, something to do because this is your ministry. And we all need to think of it like that. I think it would be easier if we realize that we're just on assignment, like pawns, right? <laughs> in his game, in his chess on his chessboard because it's his. It's his ministry. We became a part of something that's already existed. We don't need to create. We don't need to add. We don't need to take away. He puts us on assignment. He gives us tasks to do for his ministry. So what are you doing that's your ministry that you need to converge, that you need to join resources with somebody else because it's not your ministry. It's God's ministry. We need to combine forces and resources with everyone and really be heaven on earth. And it'll be so much easier for you to find your spouse. Okay, so thank you for letting me prepare you for your spouse. I pray that you Hope and pray that you really learned a lot, that you were able to take a lot away from these um, lessons, even though there's only two of them, they were short, they were like heavy hitters, they were packed with lots of information and maybe some new ideas. 
And so, Lord, um, we just thank you for this time together. Thank you for encountering my friends supernaturally. Thank you for transforming their heart, opening their mind to understand just how important this is. And thank you for blessing them with the one that you created to be flesh of their flesh, bone of their bone, and, and their helpmate. Lord, thank you for blessing the women watching this with a strong spiritual man who can cover them more than they ever expected. In the mighty name of King Jesus, by the power of your grace, amen. So I want to ask you to consider giving because I am in full-time ministry. I don't work a nine-to-five job. Um, go to the classroom. There's a link in the announcement, paypal.me forward slash knowledge of him. Every contribution is is greatly appreciated and I always pray for everyone who gives and also if you're interested in any of my scripture meditations and prayer while you sleep I pray over you while you sleep um, for freedom there's one for freedom there's just a general encouragement and then there's my one for healing all the healing um, scriptures we meditate over that and I pray over you for like two hours while you sleep and you can also use that in conjunction with my um, essentials earth blends I hand pour each one of them and pray the Holy Spirit inside the oil um, specifically just for you and your needs before I put it in the mail so please message me email me if you're interested in learning more about any of that because I do want to share what God has given me, as long as I have breath in my lungs, there isn't anything else I can do. God bless you and stay supernatural.